My weird school. Fast facts. Pizza, peanut butter, and pickles. Written by Dan Gutman. Pictures by Jim Pilot. Chapter six. Fast food. Fast facts. We've all eaten there. McDonald's, Subway, Pizza Hut, Taco Bell. There are thousands of them all over the place. But my grandma told me that when she was a kid, none of those fast food restaurants even existed. How did she survive? I looked up what was the first fast food restaurant on my smartphone, and it said it was White Castle. The first one opened in nineteen twenty-one. But my vote goes to Nathan's Famous. In 1912, Nathan Handwerker left Poland to start a new life in Brooklyn, New York. He got a job working at a restaurant called Feltman's German Gardens in Coney Island. They sold a lot of hot dogs, but Nathan thought he could make a better one. So he and his wife Ida borrowed three hundred dollars and set up a stand on the boardwalk, selling hot dogs for five cents. Half the price of Feltman's. They seasoned the dogs with a secret blend of spices handed down from Ida's grandmother. By 1920, Nathan's Famous was selling 75,000 hot dogs each weekend. But rumors went around that Nathan's half-price hot dogs were no good. People said he used meat that wasn't beef. So Nathan got the greatest idea in the history of the world. He hired a bunch of guys and dressed them in white lab coats so people would think they were doctors. The doctors ate Nathan's hot dogs right in front of the stand, and the public decided that the food was safe to eat. Here's a fast history of some of our other favorite fast food chains: KFC. During the 1930s, Harlan Sanders owned a gas station in Kentucky. In his spare time, he made fried chicken, and he'd sell it to travelers who stopped for gas. The chicken became so popular that the governor named Sanders a Kentucky Colonel. Colonel Sanders started traveling across the country, cooking up chicken in restaurants. He earned a nickel for every chicken that was sold. His company became Kentucky Fried Chicken, and now it's KFC. In 1956, Colonel Sanders met an ambitious young guy named Dave Thomas. Sanders hired Thomas to turn around four struggling KFC restaurants. They became so successful that Dave Thomas decided to start his own restaurant, and he named it after his daughter Wendy. Today, there are more than six thousand Wendy's restaurants. McDonald's. Maurice and Richard McDonald were brothers who owned a hamburger joint in San Bernardino, California. In 1954, an appliance salesman named Ray Kroc noticed that the brothers had ordered eight milkshake machines. He was impressed that such a small shop. Could sell so many milkshakes, so he went to have a look. What he found was a simple, efficient restaurant that sold a huge amount of hamburgers at half the price, fifteen cents of other restaurants. Customers ordered at the counter, so there was no need for waiters. They didn't need dishwashers because they used plastic silverware and paper plates. The food arrived quickly because it was cooked ahead of time and warmed under heat lamps. Croc knew a great idea when he saw one. He went into business with the McDonald brothers, opening up McDonald's restaurants all over the country. The story has a sad ending. Six years later, Croc bought out the brothers and took over McDonald's. In the agreement. Maurice and Richard weren't even allowed to use their own name anymore. They renamed their restaurant Big M. Ray Kroc's response: 
He opened the McDonald's around the block and drove Maurice and Richard out of business. Taco Bell. Maybe there's something about San Bernardino, California. Taco Bell started there too. And do you know why it's called the Taco Bell? Because the guy who started it was Glenn Bell. He was running a burger stand across Bell's hamburgers and hot dogs in 1950. Across the street was a Mexican restaurant. Bell was friendly with the owner, who showed him how to make tacos. Bell opened up his own place called the Taco Tia. It was a success, so he kept opening up more and more of them. In 1962, he changed the name to Taco Bell, and now there are 7,000 Taco Bells from China to Panama. Pizza Hut and Domino's Nowadays, it seems like there's a pizza place on every corner. But that wasn't the case in 1958. So college students Dan and Frank Carney borrowed $600 from their mother and bought used equipment to start the first Pizza Hut in Wichita, Kansas. Now there are over 13,000. Domino's was also started by two brothers, Tom and Jim Monahan, in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Within a year, Jim chided his share of the business for the old Volkswagen Beetle the brothers were using to make deliveries. Speaking of deliveries, on his first delivery, Tom Monahan met his future wife, Marjorie. They've been married for over 50 years. Dunkin' Donuts and Krispy Kreme During World War II, Bill Rosenberg worked at Quincy Shipyards in Massachusetts. There weren't many places to go for lunch, so he bought some trucks and began to sell sandwiches, coffee, donuts, and snacks from them. When he saw that half his sales came from coffee and donuts, Bill decided to open a little place that just sold coffee for 10 cents and donuts for a nickel. It took off, but he didn't like the name, Open Kettle. He noticed that customers liked to dunk their donuts in the coffee, so he changed the name to Dunkin' Donuts. Krispy Kreme was started by Vernon Rudolph in the 1930s. He bought a secret recipe from a chef in New Orleans and started making donuts in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Rudolph was selling his donuts to local grocery stores, but the smell of them baking was so powerful that people walking by asked how they could get them. So, Rudolph cut a hole in the wall of the building and started selling hot donuts directly to customers. And that's the whole story. Subway. In 1965, Fred DeLuca was a 17-year-old kid in Brooklyn, New York. He wanted to go to college to become a doctor, but he didn't have enough money. At a barbecue, Fred asked a family friend, Peter Buck, for a college loan. Buck wouldn't give it to him. Instead, he suggested that Fred open up a sandwich shop and invested a thousand dollars to get it started. Together, they opened Pete's Super Submarine in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Later, they changed the name to Pete Subway, and finally, Subway, in 1968. Today, there are more Subway locations, over 44,000, than any other fast food chain. Fred DeLuca never did become a doctor, but he stayed in school while Subway was growing, and in 1971, he graduated from the University of Bridgeport. Dairy Queen and Baskin Robbins Sherb's was the name of three ice cream parlors in Kankakee, Illinois. They were owned by Sherb Noble. One day in 1938, his suppliers, Bradley and Jack, Grandpa, McCullough, told Sherb they had invented a new kind of ice cream. Soft ice cream. Sherb agreed to try the stuff at one of his stores and held an all-you-can-eat-for-ten-cents sale.
Two hours later, sixteen hundred servings had been sold. The store was so mobbed with customers that Sherb was afraid they were going to break the front window. That led to the first Dairy Queen in Joliet, Illinois. Around the same time, Irv Robbins was working in his father's ice cream shop in Tacoma, Washington. Irv was bored with chocolate and vanilla, so he started to experiment with other flavors. A few years later, Irv's brother-in-law Bert Baskin opened an ice cream shop in Pasadena, California. Baskin and Robbins decided to combine forces. They flipped a coin to decide whose name would go first on the sign. As you can guess, Baskin won. Baskin Robbins has had more than a thousand flavors, plus some that were tested but never made: ketchup, grape Britain, and lox and bagels. Fun fast fact: Barack and Michelle Obama had their first kiss at a Baskin Robbins in Chicago. Isn't that romantic, Arlo? Yuck! Gross.